Hey, my name is Patrick Lacasse, and uh, I'm the collections and uh, exhibitions assistant. So basically, I uh, take care of uh, the collection. The university has a huge art collection, numbering about 30,000 items, and it's my job to take care of it. And also, I install all the exhibitions here at the gallery. So he's been using them for the uh, last few years. He's bring, bringing classes in to look at them. And then, you know, earlier, uh, well, I guess it was maybe last spring or early summer where he asked me uh, if it would be possible to have the manuscripts transferred over to the, uh, the library so the students could have access to them more easily. Well, they do present certain challenges because they're double-sided, right? So you can map them so you can show both sides, you know, and then you have to make a special frame with, like, glass on both sides. Or So that's one of the things you kind of have to figure out in advance, like if you're only going to show one side or both sides. Or well, I did the you know, mat one of the larger pieces and build a little stand for it for the for the exhibition. They were purchased from a, an estate sale back in 1995, uh, the estate of William Fraser. I'm not sure who that is exactly, but that's probably all, that's, that's about all I know about those manuscripts. Um, my name is Lloyd Keane and I'm the archives and our book coordinator for the archives and research collections at the uh, McOdrum Library. Um, Archives and Research Collection is essentially the um, repository for the rare books in the library, um, but it also involves uh, archival material from various donors that are used in uh, teaching and learning at Carleton. Uh, part of that is the medieval uh, manuscript collection. My role is essentially to assure that we have, protect what we have, um, and uh, that includes the manuscript material. So, you know, we keep it in the uh, uh, climate controlled environment, we make sure it's secure, you know, not everybody has access to it. And that's essentially what my role is in that respect. Uh, and then I make it available. So how, d how do you deal with it? How do you work with it? Um, what to do, what not to do? Um, and then I often try to listen in on classes so I can learn about our material because I am n by no stretch uh, an expert in um, book culture, but I'm learning as I go along with that. Um, so yeah, the material um, usually leaves, we have a few bound manuscripts, uh, liturgical music, uh, choral books. So they're made available to the class uh, to work with. Um, our material is meant to be used, so we don't keep it behind glass. Um, it is housed and stored and protected, but the whole idea is that we can use it uh, in teaching and learning. And so that hands-on perspective really is part of that um, engaged instruction. You know, we want to be able to feel that material. When you see the look on people's faces when they, <laughs> especially the big large tome, when you open that up and then people are like, can I touch it? Not only can you, I encourage it. In fact, I usually say, you know, you, you can pet the vellum. You know, people haven't really had the experience of, exper you know, touching that vellum. And that oil is really, as long as you don't have dirty hands, that oil is actually really good for the, for the vellum. So, yeah, no, we, I want to, that's why I often leave. It's like, here, here are the do's and don'ts, and now I'm gonna go because you don't need me. You need, I mean, Professor Soret is somebody who's gonna, you know, give you the background and give you more information, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to learn from that process. Part of the problem of, uh, of these sorts of sources is that they languish in, uh, in libraries untouched, unseen, uh, and so for the most part, it's as if they don't exist. And, uh, and so by teaching a course which is encouraging students to think about how we can make these accessible by digitizing them in one fashion or another, um, it works towards this goal of granting other people access to them. Manuscripts are fun. Uh, there's something kind of amazing about being able to put your hands on something which is six, seven hundred years old. It collapses that historical distance. It's not some faraway thing. It's not some um, distant sort of time period, but rather it's something you can hold in your hand and you can see sort of, um, they can, you can see doodles that they've made on a page or you see the craftsmanship that someone has put into to these sorts of artifacts and so it's, um, it's just an, an incredible way to make students see history as, uh, as tangible and not abstract. What students are doing this year is not just sort of they're not doing busy work. They're not doing assignments just to practice. They're actually they're creating new knowledge. They're they're cataloging these manu manuscript pages 
that no one knows anything about. And so they're really making it accessible to other people. They're creating new knowledge. And I think every, every student, every historian, every person should have the chance to sort of see how um, you're not just learning at university. It's like what you're learning is, is sort of this, you're contributing to, um, to our storehouse of knowledge and um, being able to see yourself as someone who makes, um, who creates knowledge, who sort of, um, who adds a new volume in this sort of storehouse is, is a powerful thing because then you realize you can do that anywhere. You don't have to be at a university to do it. You, you can do it anytime on your own.